everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing Android development roadmap from beginner to advanced. There are so many things to discuss today. So before starting with the roadmap, let me give you a quick disclaimer that it is not necessary to follow the exact same roadmap because I created this roadmap based on my perspective and there are chances that your perspective might be different from mine. Hence, your roadmap can be different, right? Also, it is a never-ending debate that roadmaps are necessary or not, but all I will say is consider roadmap as important topics to cover and most importantly, be flexible with your roadmaps. But despite the above criticism, roadmaps will also help you to understand which topic lies in which level. For example, you are learning Android for the first time and suddenly you jump to an advanced level topic instead of beginner level topic. So that will create a mess, right? Hence, it will segregate the beginner, intermediate and advanced topics so that you can learn accordingly. Because there are so many free content already available on internet that will make you as a beginner confused from where to start. And that's when roadmaps comes into the picture. But again, I'll say be flexible with your roadmaps and do not follow them blindly. So yeah, with that said, let's get started with our Android development roadmap, aka important topics in Android development. You can access the roadmap through my website. I'll put the link in the description box. So this is how it looks. I have segregated it in four parts as beginner level, intermediate level, advanced level, and lastly as an Android developer. I have also provided an Excel sheet of roadmap in the description box so you can download it from there and you can use it to track your progress. Also, I won't go in detail about each topic because that will consume a lot of time, but I'll make sure to give you an overview about the topic with their examples and why is it important and also the topics that can be asked at the time of Android developer interview. So yeah, with that said, let's move on to our first level that is beginner level. This is where students usually get stuck that which language to choose, Java or Kotlin. Well, let me keep it simple. If you are someone starting to learn Android development in 2023, then go for Kotlin. But if you are someone who is creating Android projects in Java since a very long time, then I will say keep yourself diversified, be open to learn Kotlin language as well. Because see, it's not about Google declaring Kotlin as an Android official language, but it is more about that Kotlin does make the process simpler as compared to Java. I agree with the fact that yes, Java has a huge community, but as a developer, you should be open to adapt new language. And if you know one language, then it is very easy to learn another language as well. Also, most importantly, language should never be as important as logic building, because at the end, it's all about solving problems using your own logic. You can find Java, Kotlin, Syntax all over the internet, but you won't be able to find the exact logic on internet. So better work on your logic building rather than wasting your time choosing which language to go for. Also, I wrote XML as well, that is for designing, but I know that as a developer, you won't use it a lot, but I will always recommend that at least you should be little bit aware about it, right? Second is Explore Android Studio IDE, that is Integrated Development Environment. So basically, beginners are always in rush to learn and they directly hop on to creating projects without knowing where exactly they are creating the project. So knowing your ID is also a part of learning, hence explore Android Studio. As a beginner, bring that curiosity in you and try experimenting with different buttons and menus. And even if you're stuck somewhere, you have internet, right? Then third, we have a lot of things to cover. So you might be aware about activities, right? There are so many activities we have used such as empty activity, then navigation drawer activity, bottom navigation activity, and so many more. And also mark it as an interview question, widely asked what is an activity. Then comes layouts. We have a variety of layouts such as linear layout, constraint layout, and relative layout. In this topic, you need to understand each layout and when are we supposed to use which layout. Plus most importantly, nesting of layouts and also mark it as an interview question. Then comes views. We have already used a lot of views such as image view, text view, list view, and many more. Then comes material design. Of course, designing is not a part of development, but I wrote it because Android Studio is focusing more on material design nowadays, and its dependency is already present in the latest version of Android Studio, hence at least be aware about it. Then lastly, create your first Android Hello World project using all the above concepts. Also make sure that whatever you learn, such as activity, layouts, and views, learn it by creating example projects. You are a developer, so the ratio of creating projects should always be 
more than reading theory. Obviously, these are not the only topics in beginner level, there are many. But I find this topic as very important, hence I have mentioned them and same goes with other level as well. With that said, let's move on to our next level that is intermediate level. Databases such as SQL or Firebase because our projects are leveling up, hence we will require database to store user details, correct? Then second comes as activity life cycle, one of the most important topic and interviewer's favorite question. In my upcoming video, I'll surely cover it. So basically there are six stages in activity life cycle that act as a backbone of your application, okay? Now third is multi-screen apps, which means as a beginner, you are creating single screen apps, but as I said, it's time to level up Hence, project will require multiple screen and you should be capable enough to understand how to coordinate between multiple screens. Then again, one of the most important topic that is MVVM architecture. I know this all words might sound little complex to you guys, but don't worry, you haven't learned all of these things yet. Hence, they are looking slightly complex to you. That's okay. So, MVVM stands for model, view, view model. Again, one of the most favorite question of interviewer. So, basically, when you create a project, it is divided in three parts. In simple words, model consists of data, view consists of UI, and view model consists of medium through which data is passed on to UI. All right. I have previously created a video on MVVM. You can click on the i button to watch. Also, in future, I'll be creating a project using MVVM. So, stay tuned for that as well. Then comes libraries and plugins. Or you can say dependencies. So basically libraries in Android are pre-written code packages that developers can use to add functionality to their application. Simple, right? And dependency refer to as an external library or module that a project requires to function. Okay? Then comes fragments, intent, manifest and gradle. All of these are core topics of Android and widely asked in interview as well. For fragments, understand the difference between activity and fragment and also when to use fragment and when to use activity because fragment is a part of activity, okay? Then next is intent. There are two types of intent, implicit and explicit. Understand the difference by creating a pro sample projects, okay? In short, intent leads you from one activity to another activity. Simple, right? Then manifest. We have used Android manifest.xml file a lot of time, right? Basically, it's a backbone of your project. It literally stores everything about your app, such as app icon, app name, permissions, launcher activity, and many more. Then comes Gradle. Again, one of the most important part of Android Studio. This is where most of the people face error. Gradle be failed, right? Because Gradle manage project dependency and all the other build processes. Now next is Recycler view. I have kept it aside because this is where the things actually start leveling up. Most of the app use Recycler view only which requires handling and arrangement of data with the help of adapters. Implement Recycler view projects thoroughly very well because this is what you are going to use most of the time. Also interview or time favorite question that is difference between list view and Recycler view. Then comes a little complex topic such as room and shared preferences. So room is basically a library that helps in simplifying the database which allows the integration of live data and view model which we will cover in advanced level. And shared preferences is a data storage which allows application to store small amount of primitive data. Now comes version control that is Git and GitHub. Both of them are different so don't get confused between them. So Git is a version control system that manage source code changes and collaborate on projects with multiple developers. As a developer, you should be familiar with GitHub because this is where you can safely keep your project as a backup and open source for upgradation. Also understand the concepts such as merge, pull, push and commit. Okay, now coming to our next level that is advanced level. Here yeah, things might get little complicated, but if you have already done basic and intermediate level, then advanced will seem to look much simpler to you. Firstly, APIs, that is application programming interface. In simple words, we have used Google Maps API in our projects, right? That API is provided by Google so that we can use Google Maps in our application. And the same way you might have seen weather API, news APIs, right? Then comes Wally and REST. So Wally is an HTTP library that makes networking tasks easier and faster. While REST is representational state transfer that is used for building scalable and efficient web services, it uses standard HTTP methods such as GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. Then comes Dagger Hilt and Dependency Injection. So Dagger Hilt is a dependency injection framework that simplifies the process of managing dependency and makes your code more modular and testable. 
Now comes live data. So basically it is a data holder class that allows UI component to automatically update when data changes. Then comes data binding and view binding. So data binding is a feature that allows developer to bind UI elements in XML layouts to their data sources. And view binding on the other hand generates a binding class for each XML layout file which makes it easy to access UI components in your code. Then next comes coroutines and adapters. So basics of coroutines can be covered in intermediate level because we will be using recycler view and list view which does require adapters but advanced adapters can be covered in advanced level and, and coroutine is lightweight concurrency framework that allows developer to write non-blocking code. Then comes content provider and broadcast receivers. As a beginner, this all might sound very boring to you, but once you complete all these three levels, that's where the real fun begins. Stay tuned for that. So content providers provide a structure interface for data sharing between applications. And broadcast receivers are components that respond to system-wide broadcast announcements such as battery level changing or a network connection being established. But it then comes networking and trading. So networking basically involves the use of networking APIs which are built in and also third-party libraries to send and receive data over the internet. And trading involves the use of multiple trades of execution to perform tasks asynchronously that will ultimately going to improve the app performance. And lastly, it's debugging and testing. As a developer, you should be aware of how to debug your app. Testing might be in different hands, but as I always say, at least be a little bit aware about it. So there are many debugging ways to identify your errors and solve them. Students usually give up on coding because they are not able to solve error. Never do that. Instead, a real developer will always find a way through it. With that said, let's move to our final and fun level that is being an Android developer. Of course, learning never ends here because this is where you have to apply all your learnings and skills in a real world. So once you become an Android developer, it's time to create projects that actually solve real world problems. Put those projects in your resume as well as on Google Play Store. Then you can also create application for your clients as a freelancer or maybe working in a corporate. Now once you have uploaded your application on Google Play Store, make sure that you promote it as well. App marketing is quite underrated, hence people usually don't pay attention to it. But if you really want more downloads and user, then make sure that you are promoting your app in a right group of audience. Now once you have an engaging audience, then it's time to put advertisement in your application. With the help of AdMob or some other third party, you can insert ad in your application. So if the user clicks on the ad, you get paid for it. Cool, right? Now you can create application for your client and earn or you can upload your own application to Play Store and earn through ads. It's totally up to you. All I will say is the more applications you will create, the more you will learn. Hence, never stop learning. And with that said, we are done with a roadmap. Lastly, more than a roadmap, it was all about the important topics of Android that you have to cover to become a successful Android developer. All right, that is it for the video. You can download the roadmap Excel sheet from the description box. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.